Hello and welcome to the first video blog for Knights. My name is Barry Collins and in this video I'll be showing some of the behind the scenes things for the game as we work on it. So this is um, ZBrush and um, this is the high poly model for the scrapper. He was created entirely using uh, ZBrush. I did not create a mesh beforehand in 3D Studio Max and then bring it into ZBrush, I uh, created all of the mesh inside ZBrush. So this method I found to be extremely fast, extremely effective, and has only one minor downside which may come into place into play with a face, for example, um, is that there is no uh, edge flow particularly to this. Um, but I find it doesn't really matter when it comes to a creature like this. It might be an issue with a human face, but uh, I don't think it will be a big deal considering I won't be animating the high poly model, I'll be animating the low poly model, and I'll just make sure the low poly model has good edge flow to it. Um, overall, this was the quickest method I have ever seen for creating an object. Um, I'll go into a lot more depth in a video tutorial, perhaps, of of the creation process for the, for the scrapper. Um, it was basically sketch out the shapes in 3D using Z-Sketch and then create a unified skin, um, flesh out the shapes a little bit more on that unified skin, subdivide it once more, and go in and do all the nitty gritty details of say the bicep here or the wrinkles in behind um, on the fleshy parts. So. This is this is it. This is the high poly model. It took me a couple weeks to to learn the process and uh, and bang out all the details, but uh, I'm quite satisfied with the results. Here are the 2D textures required for the scrapper low poly model. Um, this is the diffuse texture. This is the normal map. This is the gloss map, and this is the specular map. The nor uh, diffuse map contains most of his basic uh, coloring information. This one dictates how shiny or how matte he is, and this one dictates um, the color of the shine. And the reason why they're such wild colors is if you shift it off from the main hue, you stop it from um, going from this blue to an even more extreme version of that blue. If you shift it to the side, the, the new color brings in different tones and, and helps control it. So um, at keeping the, the bony parts like this as a, as a baby blue, it ends up um, sort of showing up as a white shine instead of a, a really, really yellowy shine that it would have normally come up with if I had stuck with the original tone. Um, and this is the normal map, which gives all of its bump information. There's not really a whole lot to see here. Um, it's just basic coloring information, which you get to see a lot better when you actually look at the 3D model, which we're about to do in a few seconds. Here's the scrapper in 3D Studio Max. Uh, it has his gun set up with it as well. Uh, this is also complete with a full animation his actual idle animation, which will play when he doesn't move. It's also what pretty much every other animation will derive its original pose from. This is the scrapper's base pose right here. Uh, over here is his actual rig. Uh, I have all these various control points set up, such as grabbing the main one right here, which will move his pelvis, forcing everything else to move. I can grab these, this big main one out here, which will control the two individual arm control points, or I can individually go in and grab each one. This is just good for keeping uniform movement overall. Um, I have look at targets set up for his eyes, which are focused on this control point, so as I move this, it moves both the control points for his eyes. I have various points set up for his back as well, so I can get subtler positioning out of him, and lots of individual ones for his tail, 
the two claws off of his back, and I can also grow him and control those individually as well. As you can see, they've all been animated to control various points of his body. The legs, for example, are always anchored to the ground. You can move those, and for additional control, move his knees. This is a, an extremely effective method animating. Basically, you don't have to really animate the uh, individual bones at all. The only ones I really have to tweak on their own are his big claw bones. So I can actually go in and adjust those. I thought it unnecessary to set up a control point for those. This is entirely done using the animation IK solvers, using the HI solver. It's an extremely effective method for setting up a skeletal rig. Um, and I'll go into a tutorial about that um, in a, a lot more depth on that because I think everyone should know how to use these. If you notice, there's all the HI solvers underneath here. You can go in and actually individually adjust them, but I'd rather adjust something a little more easy to grab, which is what I've done here. I merely linked this to that object. So. Overall, it's, it's a fairly simple rig, but it, it looks more complicated than it really is. I used to always look at an animation rig similar to this and get kind of terrified by it, but in the end it's actually quite easy to set up, and the results of animation are a lot better than I could achieve by individually animating each bone on its own. So now we're going to go into the Unreal Development Kit and take a look at this in-game. Here's the scrapper in the Unreal Development Kit. Um, I have his idle animation repeating. Um, you can see he's got his shader, or his texture effects. All of those are completely set up. Um, he's set up with subsurface scattering, which means that light will cast through his body, um, more so on the white bony sections and the um, fleshy sections, and particularly his eyes. Um, light will cast through it and out the other side, um, just like it would on a human's ear, for example. Um, and I'll show you in the material itself how this has been achieved. I won't go into uh, a huge amount of detail, but you can at least come to understand what the Unreal Development Kit system will look like. So. Here's all the information set up for his diffuse texture right up in here. All of this is here merely to allow me to replace his shell color using this alpha. Um, so I can just pick a color and it will alter the way he looks to be more that color. This will be good for um, when we want to randomize how every single crab looks, make sure they all have a slightly different hue. Um, this is all for his specular. Um, there's some minor adjustments in there for um, the, the tone of it because I wasn't too satisfied with how it looked and I can adjust it further as needed. This is also down here to allow me to increase the intensity of the shine or decrease it. Um, this here is the control for the glossiness so I can make him flatter looking, less shiny, and I can also make them shinier. Here is the all the information for the subsurface scattering. Um, here's where it takes place, um, more so on the, uh, on the fleshy sections of his body than anywhere else. Um, here's all the colors of what it looks like um, as it casts through. Um, so good to keep in mind that as it casts through it starts off as this blue and then will combine with this sort of yellow um, and the, uh, or the reds. So on the texture it's a slightly dull red where there's flesh but ends up with the subsurface scattering looking quite, um, quite overly saturated with red which is kind of nice. It brings out new tones that weren't originally there. 
gives the impression of light sort of bouncing through an object. Try and find a good spot on here that shows that off. How originally it's kind of just a pale gray, but then with light casting through it, it goes quite, quite deep and red. So it really does give the sensation of almost jello of some sort. It really makes it uh, have that extra sense of depth and, and fleshiness, which I really like. Sort of pale green, as it is here. And all the way to the darkest of saturated red. I uh, am quite happy with the results of this, and uh, I'm very pleased with how easy it is to do this in Unreal. And just for fun, I dropped it into, dropped the scrapper right into the, uh, into a test level that Epic Games provides. I'll select something else. So it's down the view. Um, but yes, you can see the uh, the subsurface scattering. It's subtle on the face, for example. It just sort of looks more like reflected light, almost, um, adding a nice little bit of saturation there. Um, the eyes are backlit. Um, the the light mass going on in this is, is beautiful. Light mass is, is Epic Games' um, uh, pre-calculated lighting systems, which are just fantastic. The overall result is, is stunning. I am so excited to be working with this technology. So that's about it for um, for the development process. A uh, really brief overview of the development process of the scrapper. Um, I'll go into a lot more detail on, uh, of every little step, the importing and exporting processes, um, the color choices, any of that sort of stuff, uh, all the way also back to the concept art, um, how we uh, came to this conclusion that this was the uh, what the, the scrapper, the Carsonite pirate man would look like. So um, hopefully this ends up being slightly useful to you and entertaining, and um, please stay tuned for more. Thank you very much.